Super Mario 3D World is too easy of a game, so today I'm gonna make it harder. Here are the rules for this challenge. No running allowed. I cannot click the X button when I am walking. No power-ups, not even the boxes you wear on your head or those things you can drive around in. I have to be Mario in his base form. Small Mario only, no damaging enemies, no tapping on enemies with the touchpad. We basically just gotta run from enemies at this point, so no interference. Only regular jump, so I can't use any of the other fancy moves that all the characters have just normal A presses. No checkpoints, no co-op mode. And this is just because it would make some parts easier by jumping on each other's heads. The challenge we're doing here today is like the bare bones Mario 3D World run. Basically my options for the entire run are walking, jumping, ground pounding, and even wall jumping too because it still uses only one press of the A button so it's nothing fancy. That's it though for my moves. Also since I can't run at all, it makes it harder to clear jumps since your airspeed is greatly reduced and it's harder to get away from enemies. This leads to enemies that are constantly going to be on my tail that I have to be able to, well, out walk for the entire run. See, unlike most of the 2D Mario games where enemies have set patterns, in 3D ones most enemies will charge right at you. This part of the challenge is a bit like the cosmic clone levels from Galaxy. Jumping really doesn't help either since you don't move any faster than walking and you pose the risk of jumping on one of their heads which we cannot do. For that reason, when an enemy is chasing us, we really can't stop and always have to move in the most optimal path. That's also why I banned all the other moves or else I could just roll or spin jump away. And okay, I know I said I can't damage enemies. Well, let me rephrase that. I can't damage most enemies. This is just because there are various bosses and enemy blockades that stand in our way, as well as enemies and levels that you have to defeat because they hold these warp boxes. So there is absolutely no way to avoid those. However, they are the only enemies that I can damage though. Every single other enemy in the levels is off limits. Also in the rules, I said small Mario only, and I mean specifically playing as Mario. This is so I can't take advantage of Luigi's higher jump, Peach's float or Toad's faster movement. Just Mario and his basic moves. And that's how this run is kind of gonna play out. I have to go through all eight worlds and fight the final Bowser boss at the end with all these limitations. But with all these rules in place, how am I supposed to jump on the Histocrat without a cat suit? Or get through this group of flying dry bones? And how am I supposed to walk through this maze while this deadly black fog is quickly chasing me? Well, those questions will all be answered in this video, so let's get on to it. And you know, like the video if you want me to do more challenge runs like this one because it helps me out a lot. Okay, let's go. So we start at the very first level and we see that we are Big Mario already. Yes, this game loves to give the player Big Mario for no reason, which is a no-go here. While I can control avoiding getting Big Mario from checkpoints, when we first start a level or respawn after dying, we will be Big Mario. So what I had to do is purpose get hit by the first enemy in a level and then go back to the very start every time that this happened. And in some later levels where I couldn't get hit and then go back to the start, I had to finish another level as Small Mario first and then start the other level that I died in. Okay, let's start for real now. The first level already taunts us with this bunny that Nintendo insists I run to get, but I don't fall for your tricks Nintendo and carry on. So the obvious challenge in this game is just trying to beat the levels, but the secondary challenge which is also required to beat the game is having to collect enough green stars to unlock the final level. And the second green star in level 1-2 cannot be collected simply because I need to defeat this enemy for it to spawn. So hopefully there will be enough green stars that I am still able to collect by the end of the run. I did have a pretty cool way of getting this last green star though, if I do say so myself. Overall, World 1 isn't too bad, and most green stars are possible. We even have the first Toad level, which is pretty well a free 5 stars since you can't jump at all and really don't need to run. World 2 does ramp up the difficulty more. The first level has these bees that are faster and really chase you down. Combine that with sand that slows your movement and these fast hitting bird things, and it was challenging, but nothing too bad. At first, I didn't know how I was gonna make it up this path of birds here, but they left a small space in the middle that I squeezed through. 
I saw a toad here that was being attacked and wanted me to help or something, so I walked with him for a bit and explained the rules of this challenge, in which he understood and knew I had to keep going with the task at hand. The next level here is like this shadow level and it starts off okay, but then we get to a 2D section where there is this giant 2D piranha plant that we have to jump on, and our puny little jumps can't go over him without damaging it. The blocks under him are breakable, but that's only if we have a roll to use or a cat power up, both of which are banned here. I tried this jump a few times, but it's not even close. I always hit this guy. So as far as I know, this level is unbeatable already. Luckily, and I mean luckily, this level is on a split path in which we can just take the other path. However, since we can't beat that shadow level, this means we cannot get all three of the green stars there, so we need to make that up later somehow. This world also introduced us to mystery box houses, which are basically a series of challenges that we have to beat to get a load of green stars. And the first challenge challenge in this world is to defeat these two guys to get a green star. Huh. Yeah, we can't do this one. That makes us lose five green stars, so this green star situation is not getting any better. But then we get to the last stage in World 2, and it presents a problem when we see this line of soldiers. Their formation is looking pretty good, and we cannot sneak around them. And we can't even jump over them, because I always land on at least one of them. I even tried different timings when I started the jump, and you'll either land on the front or back soldier. There's no alternate routes either, this is a castle level. I was stuck on this for a bit, but the one saving grace is this wall here in which I can use a wall jump to barely get over the line. This allowed me to complete World 2 and the castle. Then we get to World 3, the snow world which starts with a snow level. The big problem here was the ice because you move really slow while on it. And the enemies chasing you just have these big old skates so there's no running away from them. Even jumping wasn't working here as they would skate right under you so fast and force you to kill them. I had to move a bit more carefully but was able to juke out these guys. And I even snuck behind this wall of flying skittles and got the green star. And then the next level in this world gives us even more problems. See, it's a ghost house filled with ghosts that come directly towards you. And for some reason, it's filled with conveyor belts in which you move very slow if you're walking against the grain. At the end of the level, everything is combined with a big boo chasing you while you walk on the conveyor belt. Simply put, you can't outrun the ghost, you're always too slow. I tried this over and over, even going at the very edge of the platform, but I still kept dying. However, since these ghosts always followed me, I tried luring them away from the conveyor belt so I had a head start on normal ground and was actually able to outrun them. Awesome, we're good! Then I kept running and another ghost spawned and he immediately caught up and killed me. Yeah, this is when I felt pretty screwed. I had room to lure the first ghost away, but I kept getting sandwiched in the middle with nowhere to run because of these conveyor belts. But I had another strategy which I think would get me past this. Walk up and spawn the first ghost, lure him away so I can reach the second conveyor belt. Then spawn the second ghost, move backwards and dodge the first ghost while at the same time luring both ghosts towards you. This gave me just enough space to outrun both ghosts on both conveyor belts and was able to beat the level. And then there's this Mario Kart stage that introduces these dash pads. When you step on them, you immediately start sprinting, so that is not gonna fly here. Thus, we can't touch these at all. We can actually walk around them for the entire level, but eventually get to this gap here that is way too big to jump over without sprinting. Like, come on, it's not even close. This level is also unbeatable. Once again though, this level's totally optional on a separate path and can just be ignored, so who cares? Then we get to the final castle in this world, and it's a tricky one, let me tell you. This is the introduction of train levels. We first have to slowly catch this train and then walk along this side-scrolling level. Only problem is, the screen moves at the slowest pace I've ever seen. This gets hard when they start throwing a bunch of enemies on screen that I cannot kill. The part here with this constant stream of bullet bills is what I'm talking about. Look at them all that keep coming at you and try and follow you. Combine that with this stack of Goombas and these flying whatevers that all home towards you and it becomes a very tough segment. But after many attempts with this part, I got past these bullets and even snagged the green star. Once we get a few cards down though, we are met with these bigger bullet bills that are like impossible to dodge. They are way too big to avoid and way too fast to outwalk. And I can't even jump over them because I would always end up killing them, which is no good. But in this one attempt though, I accidentally killed one of these bullets, so I just stood there to let another one kill me so I could restart the level. But wait, did you see that? 
I didn't even die. Look, he flew right over me. Yes, haha. <laughs> the way I got past this segment was just by walking right under these bullet bills. I was simply too small for them to even hit me as small Mario. <laughs> Take that, suckas. The rest of the level was doable too. After World 3, then comes the Histocrat fight, a challenge that normally requires us to use the cat suit to complete. Without it, we can't even climb up these snakes or jump on its head. However, I thought of some workarounds for this level. I had to find snakes that were similar in height so I can jump up on them. And that's how I got up top here, but was still short in reaching the jump. What I had to do was wait until he faced me and his nose would stick out far enough so that I could hit it. Obviously easier said than done, but this is the way I completed the stage. And not to mention, there's sometimes even cat suits on these platforms, so I always had to be careful of those. Then there's World 4, and honestly, it's not too bad. Just take it slow and steady here. This world does have another one of those green star houses, and it's all about running fast before the time runs out. Oh boy. However, you can get these just by walking. Yeah, seriously, the first few I just walked the whole time and grabbed them within the last few seconds. The one with the spike things I even got at zero seconds and it counted. The fun did come to an end with this dash part here and skipping the dash pads will give you not nearly enough time to complete it. But I still managed to get five stars here though, so let's move on. World five was also going well until we see another dash pad level that is required to use to get over this gap here. And yeah, like the Mario Kart one, it's not even close. But also like the Mario Kart level, this level is on a split path so we can just ignore it as well. Jeez, how do all these split paths keep working out? So we can move on to world six now and really the biggest challenge of this world is in this barge level. There is a lot of fast moving bees coming at you while you are stuck on this tiny barge. It can get problematic quickly when the bees are moving opposite to the barge movement in which they come at you very fast. This caused me to either die or accidentally jump on them, both of which I had to restart the level. And I couldn't even go up on this gate because it requires a cat suit. I had to learn sweet juking moves and got through the level. Other than that though, we're all good and can move on to world 7 now. Oh yes, and this world is where the fun begins. These last two worlds specifically present a huge difficulty spike in this challenge. More jumps, longer jumps, and just more stuff that can kill you. The first roadblock in World 7 is this red hot run level. Like the Mario Kart one, it is based around these dash pads. But unlike that one, we very quickly see that there is no way to go around these. We can't even jump over one pad. So yeah, it's impossible, not even close. But once again, this level luckily just so happens to be on a split path and I can skip it entirely by doing these switchback ruins instead. I am getting crazy good luck with these paths here. The next problem in this world though is this trick trap tower. At the end of this level, there is a section where we are chased out of this box thing by this black smoke here. The smoke moves pretty fast as is, but combine that with only being able to walk and you could see how problems arise. This is looking completely unbeatable. The enemies can also cut you off if they stop in the wrong place too when they spread out. Plus, all these seesaw things can stop in the wrong position, making it impossible at times. The big dilemma here was that even if the seesaw was in the right position to get by, then the electric enemy would be in a bad position, making this part feel unbeatable. Plus, the hitboxes on these electric things are way bigger than they look. Sometimes I swear I jumped over them and still died. This level is on a split path, but it actually doesn't help us this time. We have to beat this stage specifically to go over to this route, which led to a Captain Toad level. This would give us five extra green stars that I really needed at this point in the run. So after hours, and I mean hours of replaying this level, I was finally able to time the movement of the enemies in the seesaws together and barely make it through at points to perform this run here. And that's how it's done, folks. So we finally get to the end of World 7, and we're 13 stars short. Ouch. See, up to this point, there have been several stars that I couldn't get due to several things. Mainly because my movement wouldn't allow me to reach the star, I couldn't kill enemies to get the star, or I simply couldn't beat the level. Luckily, we can get a few more stars right off the bat. There's that Captain Toad level I just unlocked which gave me 5, and I actually missed a mystery box here in which I got 3 stars from. 
Couldn't get any more than three because I couldn't kill these Skittles. Then things got tricky. I tried going back and looking for odd stars here and there that I may have missed. And I actually managed to find a few new ones using this method, but progress was slow. So I considered trying to beat some of the levels I previously thought couldn't be beaten. This bomb level here I previously couldn't complete because of this big gap and not being able to use this sprint pad to cross it. So I needed to think of some different options. I had this one wall here to use, but simply performing one wall jump wasn't gonna cut it. However, what I could do was first wedge myself in this crack here. Then I walk straight at a very small angle to just barely fall off while keeping the most forward momentum possible. And then finally finally caught the wall at the very bottom and wall jumped my way up. By doing this, I could actually get all three stars in this level. Combine that with the few stars we got in other levels and we had 130 stars and could progress. The final level of World 7 did have these flaming guys jumping up and down, but with exact timing I could barely squeeze by and then got to the fight which was pretty easy with the touchpad. And that is another stage down and we get to the final world. The circus, yeah! But this final world, let me tell you, was the hardest set of levels by far. So let's not waste any time and I'll explain the challenges here. The first level comprised of these spike walkway things. You had to quickly walk across them when the spikes were down before they could hit you. This was obviously problematic without running. And it was especially true in this bridge part where you had to time the spikes and the bridge's movement all while you wait with this group of flying skeletons. The first bridge was three blocks in length, but the second one was four and that made it incredibly precise. You had to jump on it right when the spikes went away and even then I barely made it off on the other side as the spike sprang out. Oof. But we're not even done yet. Later on in the level, we get to a part with even more skeletons and an even bigger spiked platform that we have to stay on. At least though, I had a bit more space here and could walk around in circles with these skeletons on my back. This green star was annoying though because I got cornered with these falling platforms and I couldn't even jump over the skeletons without killing them, but eventually I squeezed by and finished the level. And also, this world has another train! Oh boy. And actually wasn't as bad as the Bullet Bill one, to be honest. With precise movements, I was able to avoid all the enemies. Even with these bird things that look totally unavoidable without running, I could just walk by on this convenient ledge here. And at the end, I barely had enough room to sneak by this fire bro and get the green star. The next stage here combines small, unseeable platforms with more skeleton guys, and even thwomps now this time. This one was tough. There are so many of these flying skeletons this time. I could not stop for even a second. What doesn't help is, yeah, I don't even know where I'm walking to. And then there's this green star, which is also a problem because it's on a tiny hidden platform. On top of that, the jump getting over there is so precise, I literally had to start my jump after I had fallen off the other platform. Somehow. Also, once I got the star, I realized I was stuck on this tiny platform and was surrounded by these flying skeletons. And I also needed to get back at this point and somehow maneuver around them. What? I was determined though. I knew it would be tight to meet our green star count for the final level, so I needed every star that I could get. I kept trying over and over different ways of going around them, and I would either die or damage them by bouncing on their heads. So I tried once again, but this time took a second to think in this corner, and then they left. They're retreating! Yeah, for some reason they won't actually come to the end of this platform if you stand at the very edge. I mean, it didn't look like that before, but good to know now, I guess. So I waited for a bit, made another precise jump back, ran circles around these guys, and then made it through. Next place of note in this world is another mystery box house that holds some precious green stars in it. But as the title says, it is based around the cat suit. Or so they thought, because I was surprisingly able to get a lot of these green stars by just making some precise wall jumps. And look, I don't even know how I managed to get this star. We could get only four of them though, because our progress ended with this big tower, but hey, better than nothing. And don't you worry, it only gets harder from here. The next big challenge is, of course, another ghost house. 
And also, of course, there are a lot of these flying skeletons again while you are trapped on small platforms. Oh boy, here we go. Let's get this over with. The biggest challenge here is when I got to this dog bone shaped one. There is a giant line of ghosts going back and forth while being chased by dry bones, while you move towards it, and while your platform spins. You normally would use the light box to kill these ghosts and the pows to kill the skeletons, but we don't have that kind of luxury now, do we? This becomes very tricky very quickly, just because of the amount of room the enemies take up on your small platform. Jumping can be difficult too, just because the platform tends to spin you right into the dry bones, which hurts them. I needed to put on my best juking shoes to get through this one. After many attempts, one strategy I developed was to jump on these pals to breathe for a bit while nothing could hit me and then jump back on after. Only problem is you would have to be far enough away from the dry bones so you wouldn't kill them and there wasn't too much room on the block either. But after even more attempts of dying over and over and over and over and over and then game over and over and over and over again, I did this run. J just take a sec to watch this. Yeah, take that! We beat the level, and this was one of the last big challenges before getting to the final level. So we climb up the final staircase to the final level, and... We are still short on green stars. By a lot, in fact. I have 154, and 170 are needed, so I am short 16 green stars. Keep in mind, I've played every Captain Toad level, every mystery box level, and gotten the max amount of stars from them. These had to be 16 stars just laying around in levels. And also, with the last gate in World 7, I already went back and got the stars I missed in previous levels, so now I'm just left with the impossible green stars. I don't even know if I can get 16 more at this point. But okay, there was no screwing around anymore. I was determined and would not sleep until I got 16 more green stars. So I then took a nap so I could get a fresh mindset and how to go about solving this problem. I took notes, wrote down every single green star that I missed, and then determined how likely it was that I could actually get it. Then I started hunting the likely stars, thinking of new ways or workarounds that I hadn't considered before. Back in World 2, there was a green star that is way up here and normally requires a cat suit to hit this gear to create a pole for you then to climb up on. But with very precise platforming, I jumped on the gear and then on this rail, tight roped across the rail so I could tie my jump on this moving gate at the exact moment to jump on it and then jump to the star. These bullies in World 6 normally have to be killed in order to spawn a green star, but I don't even have to kill them actually. If I lure them to the very edge of this boat, it'll actually rock them right off and they will die on their own, still allowing me to get the green star. The secret box star over here on this ice level normally requires you to get into a skate to move fast enough to reach the star at the other end of this long patch of ice before it disappears. However, I found a way to exploit a glitch just by mashing the crouch button to completely break my momentum and fly through this entire ice part. This actually let me get the star with one second left. Oh, come on, that one looked pretty cool, guys. These were some of the highlights, but there were a lot of stars that I went to that I really had to think outside the box to solve. I even had to continuously wall jump up this corner for what felt like ages to slowly climb up and get this star. So after all of this back and forth, I had finally reached 167 stars. I was so close, just three stars away, man. I swear I've looked everywhere at this point, no stone unturned. I couldn't even find one more green star, much less three of them. I didn't know what to do. This was now actually looking impossible. <sighs> I mean, there is three stages that we couldn't complete at this point that do have stars as well, but I still can't get over this gap on this one. I can't jump over these dash things on that one. And the 2D shadow piranha plant? Huh? Did you guys just see that? I managed to duck under his attack and then somehow went through his stem without him damaging me at all. 
Oh yeah, we take those! I went back and tried to beat the unbeatable levels and was actually able to complete this one. And in this level, it just so happens that I can get all three green stars that puts me up to exactly 170 stars. So now we can progress to the final Bowser Tower and in this place, I slowly walked up these clouds to the top, barely walked past these platforms that Bowser was destroying and hit this pal block three times to kill Bowser. Challenge complete! Yes, this challenge was actually possible, and it was a pretty fun one to do, so I suggest trying it yourself. Also, check out this video I did on Mario Sunshine, where I tried to beat that game without jumping. It was a very interesting video as well. But that's it for me, I'm keeping this outro short and sweet, and I will see you guys in the next video.